we have another type of alternating, uh, another type of series that we're going to look at called alternating series. And an alternating series basically alternates between positive and negative terms. Now there are lots of different forms you see here. The first two on top are the most common by far. You'll see them 98% of the time. The negative one to the n times other stuff, so the a n can represent anything else, and then negative one to the n plus one times other stuff. Uh, I went ahead and put these other two down here because they do pop up every now and then, um, but they're not nearly as common. But cosine of the n pi does the exact same thing as negative one to the n, basically, where it rotates between negative one and positive one, negative one and positive one, negative one and positive one. And same with the sine function you see over there on the bottom right. So just be aware that cosine and sine sometimes act as um, alternating series, but in general you'll look for things like the top two, negative one to the n or negative one to the n plus one. So the first thing we want to know is how do we figure out if it converges or not? Well, an alternating series converges if these two conditions are met. First, the limit as n approaches infinity of the sequence equals zero. Notice, we take the limit while ignoring the negative one part. So we will throw out the negative one to the n and take the limit of what's left. Or we will throw out the cosine of n pi and take the limit of what's left. And if the limit of what's left is zero and this a n plus one less than or equal to a n just means it's um, non-increasing for all n, or non, it is decreasing or staying constant, then the alternating series converges. Um, you can do number two by doing the inequalities like we did when we were proving that sequences were monotonic. But I'll just be honest, I haven't run across one yet. I'm sure it exists because there's got to be a reason number two is there. But I have not run across an alternating series where number one isn't sufficient to show that it converges. So just to be honest, in this course we're just going to worry about the limit as uh, the sequence approaches infinity. If we get zero, we'll say it converges. If we don't, we'll say it diverges. So one way to look at this is it's kind of like what you wish the nth term test was. If you get zero, converges, not zero, diverges. Unfortunately, with the nth term test, it's not that clean, but for alternating series test, it is. So here's an example. We know it's alternating because of this term right here. This makes it alternating. In fact, let me pull this up on the calculator so you can see what the terms will look like. So we have negative one, raised to the n plus one times one over n. You can see here how the terms keep alternating between positive and negative. The first one is positive one, then negative one half. Positive one third, negative one fourth. Positive one fifth, negative one sixth. Positive one seventh, and so on. That's what the negative one to the n plus one does, is it causes it to alternate between negatives and positives. So you then, to test if it converges or not, simply ignore the negative one to the n plus one and take the limit of what's left over. Well, if you take the limit of this as n goes to infinity, the denominator gets huge while the top stays the same. So the limit is in fact zero, and we can say that this converges. So just ignore the negative one part, you ignore that, take the limit of what's left, if you get zero it converges, not zero diverges. So let's try this one. All right, though this one's a little tricky. It is alternating because you've got this negative number raised to the n minus one. However, you can't cross out the negative two. So here's what has to happen before you take the limit. this has to happen because this is the same thing. You can split this up into negative one and positive two. But you can't cross out, the, you can't ignore the negative two or the two when you're taking the limit. You can only ignore a negative one. So now what we can do that we've split that up, we can take the limit as n goes to infinity and go n over two to the n minus one and we'll just let the calculator help us with this one. We do x over two raised to the x minus one. And we want to know what happens as we go to infinity, so we'll do 10, 100, 1,000, and hopefully you can see it is heading towards zero. Um, the calculator gives you error, not because it's a really big number, 
but it's actually because the bottom is a really big number and it just can't calculate it any further. But you see that 2 times 10 to the negative 28th right here. So that's a, a very, very tiny number. So it is going towards 0, which means that we can say it converges. As long as the limit is 0, it converges. All right, let's try one more. We know it's alternating because of this piece right here, the negative 1 to the n plus 1. So we take the limit of what's left over, which will be n plus 1 over n. Now, if you remember the rules where the powers are the same, we just use the coefficient. The limit would be 1. Now, that is not 0. So if the limit is not 0, then the series diverges. So it's a pretty simple test. You just take the limit. If it equals 0, you converge. If it doesn't equal 0, it diverges. There's one more thing we can do with the alternating series test, and that's called the alternating series remainder theorem. Here's what it says. If an alternating series is convergent, then the absolute value of the remainder of a partial sum, and that's the difference, the remainder is just the difference between the actual sum and the estimated sum, is less than or equal to the first neglected term. So let me try to put this in uh, simpler words. If you add up, say, the first 100 terms, and you want to see, okay, how accurate is that really? Because we're supposed to go to infinity, and I just did the first 100. Well, it turns out that your answer from adding up the first 100 terms, now this is only true for alternating series, is no farther off from the actual answer than whatever the value of the 101st term is. So let's just say, for example, um, you added up 100 terms and you found it to be like 3.87. Now you used the first 100 terms, you added up all 100 terms and got this number. Now the 101st term is 0 0.05, and I'm just making these numbers up. What that tells you is that the real answer is only, can be no more than 0 0.05 away from 3.87. So the real answer must fall somewhere between 3.82 and 3.92. Because your estimate, the 3.87, can't be any farther off than 0.05. So the real answer, the total sum, would have to be between 3.82 and 3.92. So you look at the first neglected term. In other words, the first term you didn't use. And that gives you what's sometimes called an error bound you know you're wrong by no more than that amount. Now this is the type of question they tend to ask about the, these type of things. And it says, how many terms must we use to ensure that our estimate of the sum of negative 1 to the n over n squared is less than 0 0.01? So how many terms must we use to ensure our estimate of the sum of this series is less than 0 0.01? So in other words, do we need to add up the first five terms, ten terms, twenty terms, a hundred terms, thousand terms? Because um, basically, we're saying, okay, if we're within 0 0.01, we're happy. So as long as our estimate's that close, then we're okay. So let's do that. Let's plug in our series. So we had negative one raised to the n over n squared. Let me double check that. Yes, that is our series. So I'm looking for the first time that I go below 0 0.01. So I'm just going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, and then you have 5, 6, 7, and so on. Okay, well that's clearly not big enough. We're only up to, and we're looking at the absolute value again. So don't, you can't just use a negative. We're looking at absolute value. <coughs> so at 7 we're at 0.0204. So we're not yet below 0 0.01. So let's keep going. Let's try 8, 9, 10. All right, now at 10 we hit 0 0.01. But we want to go below 0 0.01. So I'm going to go ahead to 11. And there you can see we go below 0 0.01. So remember, the first term you ignore is the one that tells you the error. So what we would want to do is go from 1 through 10, and we would cut it off right there, because 11 would be the first term we didn't use, and since it's below 0 0.01, we know our, our estimate is going to be good enough to be with no more off than 0 0.01. So let me say this again. 
the way you approach this problem is you plug your series in the calculator and you look for the first term that goes below whatever they ask for, in this case 0 0.01, and then you use every term before that. So since 11 was the first time we went below 0 0.01, we would use everything before that. Now make sure you pay attention to where this starts. This started at 1, so that's not that complicated. We know we would just need to use 10 terms, because we would use 1 through 10. But had this thing started at 0, that would mean 11 terms, because you would need 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Or if it started at 2, you would just need 9 terms, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So make sure you pay attention to where the series starts. So let's try another one. How many terms must we use to ensure our estimate of the sum of negative 1 to the n plus 1 over n factorial is less than 0 0.001? Ah, so we're going a little, a little uh, more specific here. We're saying we don't want to be off by any more than a thousandth. So we plug this in the calculator. Let me erase that part. Negative 1. This time it's to the n plus 1. Um, and just so you know, it actually isn't important that you put the alternating part. You'll get the correct answer either way. All it does is change your sign, and since we're in an absolute value, it's not a big deal. So you actually don't have to put that part if you don't want to, but I'll go ahead and do it for now. So negative 1 to the n plus 1 over n factorial. So I'm looking for the first time I go below 0 .001. So let's start with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. So we're looking for the first time I go below 0 .001. So I'm not there yet at 5, because that's 0 .008. And this is a good habit. If you highlight it, it shows you the more full answer down here at the bottom. So that's a good thing to do, because sometimes the calculator is just rounding. So at 6, we're not quite there, because we're at 0 .0013. We're not below 0 .001 yet. Then at 7, we're there. At 7, we're there, because that would be... 0 0.000198. So as soon as you see that to the negative 4, that's farther away than your 0 0.001. So seven, the seventh term can be used as our error bound, which means we want to use everything above that point. So since this one started at 1, we would use 1 through 6. So we would just need a total of 6 terms. Now this is pretty cool, because I mean in general, you don't need necessarily the exact answer, you just need something that's close enough. Um, and some of these things don't even take that many terms. So this means that if we add up just the first six terms, our answer is going to be only one thousandth, or no more than one thousandth away from the actual answer we would get if we added everything up to infinity. So that's, that's the usefulness of this, is it tells you how accurate you are.